Afrotech 2017, San Francisco, California. Bozama St. John, who is at the time the chief marketing officer at Uber, takes main stage to talk about power, influence, leadership, and the uniqueness and value of the black perspective. A 2015 Nielsen report and CRR research study stated that African-American celebrities are among the most well-known, influential, marketable personalities and trendsetters across the entertainment landscape. And that our influence is undeniable in the dynamics of our nation's folklore, and we tend to be forward-thinking and innovative. We lead. Badass Bose speaks on it. Leading while black. Okay, does that make sense? Leading while black. Because we all know the saying, okay, there's leadership, and then there's leading while black. It's a very different thing. And there are very few people who understand it. All of us are trying to get there, but sometimes there are things that impede us. And if we share an information about how we achieve, how we overcome, maybe there'll be more of us. And that's my intention is that I want to make sure that what I am learning, what I'm going through, is, is uh, not for naught. That there will be more of us. Because I, you, and others who are not in this room can learn from us. The questions are, what is my power? And what is within my power? And when I think about leadership, that's one of the questions, right? We think, well, you have to reach a certain place, and then you're powerful. But that's not true, because leadership and power is not about the state of which you're at or the title that you have, but about influence. You know, so what is within your power? What's in within my power has always started from down here. It started in the small rooms, it started in the hallways. It started in knowing that even though someone stole my idea, because they did, okay, that that was my power showing up. They didn't have that idea before I shared it with them. And so sometimes it's not even about the anger, about being taken advantage of, but knowing securely that because of your thought, your idea, your presence, that something else has changed. And so understanding what's within your power and what can you influence is as important in leadership when you're at the top as it is when you're starting or when you're trying to find allies. They see pictures. They say goals. <laughs> Bitch, I'm who they trying to be. Okay? Yeah, go tell them. I'm who they trying to be, you know? And the point here, the thing that I love about this type of leadership is that we need to exemplify that. I mean, it is. We need to exemplify it. I'm Will Lucas, and this is Black Tech, Green Money. I'm going to introduce you to some of the biggest names, some of the brightest minds, and brilliant ideas. If you're black and building, or simply using tech to secure your bag, this podcast is for you. What's amazing is, um, with a lot of the people I've worked with, from like Nipsey to YG to Russ to Quavo, they already have ideas and things they want to do and get implemented and stuff. I like to say they're all Picassos. I'm just helping them paint the picture and letting the act, honestly, not even helping them paint the picture because they know what it is. It's helping the world see the picture and get their vision. That's Karen Civil, a rock star brand strategist. She first gained national attention when she helped Lil Wayne create the website, Wheezy Thanks You, so he could communicate with his fans while incarcerated. Since she's gone on to develop her own branding and marketing agency, Always Civil, and wrote a book. Karen has developed online marketing strategies for people like Nipsey Hussle, Quavo, and Hillary Clinton, and serves as a co-host of the Complex Show, Good Looking Out, which helps millennial entrepreneurs get advice from industry experts. I asked Karen about finding market opportunities on the internet, finding lanes that feel genuine so we can get paid to be ourselves. The wonderful thing that I loved about the internet is it gave me the opportunity to connect with people outside of my environment. So here I am, a Haitian American girl. Mind you, at the time, I'm not listening to like Sweet Mickey. 
Um, I wasn't, um, at the time, like for some reason, black kids didn't identify with me because everyone was segregated by choice. So I didn't really have anyone who necessarily got me. So the internet did. I was able to, to have conversations with people who had so much in common with me from across the globe, from around the world. And that to me was so amazing because I used to have a pen pal in China and it used to take about a month, a month and a half to get a letter. Now here we are, it's an email, couple of hours. My mom got me a dedicated line for my birthday. So I would just sit on the computer all day long. But it was it was helpful for me to like find my identity because honestly, I didn't feel I didn't feel like I belonged in my community, you know, because I wore all black. I identified with Wednesday Adams. On top of that, I'm Haitian. You know, my name was Karen Civil. Um, and I just feel like I didn't I didn't fit in. And I like pop music. So th so me going online and finding a group, find, being able to be in a fan group with people who, you know, are different as well. Um, felt really good. And that was my introduction to the internet. Yeah. At, at what point did you recognize that, okay, not only have I found my community, I found something that could be my lifestyle and my career. When, when I got to work with Duke the God, I would say, because that was when I, I understood what a &R admin, marketing, promo, um, branding, you had to do so much stuff and, you know, um, building an e-store and X, Y, Z. So it was just like really working with Dipset really showed me every source of like different things that now we have titles for branding, a marketing manager, social media, digital, and everything else that falls in between. Like me, me, um, the Duke Productions office used to sit and just handle all of these little things. And I feel like that's what really gave me my start into understanding websites, merchandising, building, how you build your brand, your audience, and things of that nature. So I love to talk about like like storytelling and the market opportunity that you found. So you're like yours is the marriage of like hip hop and the internet in the, in that way. And but success I imagine can also be found with people who are like interior designers and the internet and gardeners and the internet. So what would you say for folks who look at your story and they say, you know, well, she did this with like hip hop, you know, in a way. Like what how can I apply the Karen Civil lessons to my vertical? You know, yeah, it, it, I transcended. Yes. I started in hip hop, but pretty much I like to tell people don't think any industry you go in, you're going to feel like coming into it. You're the small fish. You know, you may feel being, I am a woman, a black woman, a young black woman. And I felt like I had all these targets against me. You're going to be in situations where it's a very male dominated industry where people want you to be good and not great. So it's not just in hip hop. You're going to find that if you work at Burger King, if you work at the mall, everybody has that employee who does too much or that boss who gets on your nerves and X, Y, Z. That's it's the same thing in, in having a career. But what I like to do, to, what I do tell people is if you hate your job and you hate working 40 hours, an entrepreneur is not for you because you're going to need those. You're going to have to put in that 80 hours, that time of phone calls and texts and putting out fires and everything else and getting your hands dirty and stuff. And you may not see um, financial gain from the first year, year and a half, understanding that sacrifice and things that come with it. It's so much that comes, but you know, I always tell people, take your time with it. You know, don't, don't rush, don't rush the success. Um, don't rush um, your season. Mm -hmm. Um um, give your si give yourself time to grow, time to learn, time to execute, time to fail. So it's just like, give yourself that time. I, I remember reading this quote, which what you're saying now makes me think about it. it said, you know, keep doing great work and eventually somebody will notice. Right. And I'm yeah. not saying like you waited for somebody to notice, like you created opportunities, but you, you have this sentiment that you talk about often, like getting paid to be yourself. And mm -hmm. how do you encourage people that there is an opportunity that you don't have to just go work for somebody else, that you don't have to give away your skill set, but you can be you and opportunities. Yeah. There are opportunities there in the community that you serve. Um, it's just all about being authentic. And that was my way of coming into it. I, I treat my brand as like NASCAR. You know, if you look to your left and to your right, um, and you're worrying about what they're doing, you're going to crash. 
So I'm not worrying about what's popular, what may be the, what may be, um, the trend or whatnot. I'm just authentic to myself and my audience. I never want to push anything, be a product or hold a product, wear a product or X, Y, Z. that I know I don't believe in if I wasn't getting a paycheck for it. Um, or something that I wouldn't necessarily buy on my own. That's very important. I live by the notion of I'm never stepping over a dollar to pick up a nickel. And that's my integrity. That is my time. That is, um, that is everything in between. Because a lot of times, say for instance, brands pay people, okay, I'll give you $1,200 a month for 15 posts or 10 posts. To the average person, they're like, oh my God, this is great but you have to kind of think about it. Are you gonna, that $1,200, let's 1,200, um, that 1,200 divided into 10, that's 10 posts, right? You're not really getting much for that. And then on top of that, how many times they're basically taking up, your, we'll say that you have to do this on Instagram. They're basically taking up your whole timeline. So, um, and then on top of that, they have the rights to the photo. So even after you're done your deal with them, they get to promote and use your face and your likeness for however long. So you have to understand when you're a brand, you have to be very authentic, know who you're aligning with, who you want to do business with, because every, every dollar is not a good dollar. I say no more than I say yes, because I know the type of audience I have and I never want, you know, um, a younger generation, like, oh, well, I see Karen do this. So I saw Karen Sybil do this, so I might as well try this myself. I never want to do that. I'm not stepping into the shoes of a role model, but I'm stepping into a purpose. I'm, I'm stepping into um, a person who knows her purpose and understands her platform. So tries to use it as well as possible by being authentic. It's everybody wants to be heard using their social media and you have, you know, built quite the following is what do you see most people get wrong when they're trying to be, I don't want to say like, I, I use the word influencer like very loosely because I want to, I, I mean it to mean people who are influential. And I know that's kind of an oxymoron, but people who actually have impact in their brand vertical, like how, what do you yeah. typically see them get wrong about their social media usage? Um, there are people who come in and they're like, okay, you know what I have to do? I have to come in. I have to, they will be in, um, how can I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to use references, but they'll be in the valleys and they're trying to yell at the mountaintops. Mm. So they try to, um, create conflict conversation with people who were there before them that they should be reaching out and asking for guidance. Like they rather, um, antagonize them. Uh, create some sort of conflict and be like, hey, I'm the new guy in town. So let me let me try to take you out or whatever the case may be. I've seen so many influencers do that from going at like a Funkmaster Flex or a Charlemagne who've been here forever. And it's like, why not respect these guys? And, you know, these are people who who paved the way for people of color to have all these opportunities and all these doors open. So why not celebrate it as you're walking into that open door that they helped um make happen. But, um, that I think is my biggest pet peeve is when I just see people like they think it's necessary, like, Oh, you know what? Um, I've seen people do it to me. Like, you know, I'm not the biggest, Oh, Karen's not really, um, she screams girl boss and she's, she's far from it. I'm like, first of all, I don't scream girl boss. That's Sophia. That's, that's a different brand. I scream live civil because at the end of the day, I'm living civil. That means I'm living me. Duh. So, you have those type of moments, but it's just people who just want to come into the game and they think the first thing they got to do is try to take out the king. It's like, you got time. You got time, especially when you're like a court gesture. Like, you got time. You're never going to touch the king. Black Growth Network from Blavity Inc. provides black small business owners and entrepreneurs with the funding, resources, and network needed to stabilize and grow their business. And you're invited to join our network of startups, angel investors, and VCs, which can open the door to even more funding and opportunities like pitch competitions. We're building black economic empowerment together. Check it out now at blackgrowthnetwork.com. That's blackgrowthnetwork.com. If you aren't subscribed to the Afrotech newsletter, are you really about that life? 
All the exclusive content and subscriber-only promotions can only be secured by becoming an Afrotech Insider. Join for free now at join.afrotech.com. Karen taught artists like Pusha T and Eclipse, Cameron, Jim Jones, and YG how to build profitable e-commerce platforms, which allowed them to capitalize on their public personas, a skill she developed in the trenches, being an early adopter and strategist in an industry where the traditional strategists run game from the same old playbook. This is her lane, and she's adamant that whatever your lane is, no matter how niche, you can find an audience. You're seeing now, you're seeing millionaires at the age of 10, who are doing, um, you know, toy reviews and X, Y, Z. Like my nephew is big on TikTok right now. He has his own platform and his own following and he's at like 400,000. So it's just like for the common person, people used to think, oh my gosh, you know, your nephew's like a little dark and weird, but they love and eat it up over there. So he found a space and a world for him. And I'm glad that the internet um, gives people that option of seeing life outside of their environment. Or their community. That's good. So I, I had this conversation with Charlemagne um, about our technical consumption of software. You know, think of the Instagrams, the Twitters, and the et cetera, and particularly black folks and the impact we have on the success of these things. And he's like, you know, it's one thing to be the influencer on it, but it's another thing to be building it. And so I, I would love to have your perspective on the black opportunity in this industry of technology and using our perspectives using our you know our backgrounds and our views on the world using the, the culture um what do you, how what do you think of the opportunity is for black folks to be able to capitalize on not just being the influencer but being the one who creates the platform there are people out here who are creating it um i don't know if everyone's paying attention to them ryan leslie has been doing this for a very long time with the app that he set up he is he's the one who helped Nip nipsey figure out the proud to pay nipsey created that and he is the first person he's the first store ever to be the smart store there is a dree sendu who um i'm not sure if you're you familiar with him that's yes, very very oh, yes so it's there's there's so you see now with um 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 it's not not charlemagne um mm, I, they radios oh chameleon man yeah, chameleon. Yeah, yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Like chameleon. There, there's so many people out right now who are in the coding space. Well, in our community, you are in a coding space, technology space, making things happen. And I love the fact from Black Girls Code and things of that nature that we are now in these places of position. We're yeah. growing, we're being seen, and it's great to be an influencer on the platform. But now when you see, like, I love to see the success of Ryan Leslie. I love to see Idris doing campaigns for Rihanna and, and like what he did. If you look at a Nipsey billboard and actually hold your phone up to the, using the marathon app, it actually um, plays a video and does stuff. And that's all to the old and Testament to someone like Idris, who again is now he's supposed to be doing all the meters in Los Angeles. So young black, innovators are here um and it and it's it, it's exciting because there's so many different opportunities for us because growing up you know you had a you had a few options uh you want to play basketball you played football and that's pretty much it so when you hear people talking about i want to be i want to do coding i want to do this i want to create my own app and xyz that's such an amazing experience especially they're getting younger and people um companies now are seeing the value of how people of color just need an opportunity to uh, create these type of apps and create these type of opportunities and things. When I look at what you've created, you know, a lot of what you've created is like not about you, right? Like, so even like your website is to big up the people, the things that you're into, like the artists that yeah. you're into and et cetera. So it's like you're perpetually like next to the thing and you've were the first person in a lot of respects to talk about like a Nicki Minaj and et cetera. And, yeah. and so I remember I was reading an article and it talked about like you, like you were like the Oprah of this thing. And, and so when I think about Oprah, I think about Oprah's Oprah because she had Tom Cruise on her couch. She was Oprah because she had Maya Angelou, you know, yeah. as a friend. And so I look at civil TV and the, the, the blog, the always civil and, you know, the good looking out and all the things that you're doing 
how do you navigate how, how do you think about your brand like how when you look at the grand vision of what i'm building the karen silver mm -hmm. what is it that you're building in your mind um i'm creating something that is of purpose um and it started with me being the root and after i am no longer here i am the root the tree has grown and from it you have your branches and your leaves that will continue to survive and thrive and people can continue to learn and pick from so you know, for a very long time, I equated success with monetary value. And then once you hit that mark in your account and you're still unhappy and you're realizing this is not where you want to be. Um, so my biggest thing now is creating, you know, leaving the world a better place than, um, than arriving in it, mm. doing what I can to help the next generation of people who, who I didn't have that person to give me that like, Hey, Karen, it's cool that you want to be on the internet or you want to do this or X, Y, Z to champion me or to make me feel good or to make me feel like I can start the race at the same time as my white male counterparts, you know? So that's my goal now is I love my marketing and my branding, but my philanthropy has really been taken off and it's really such a big part of who I am. Um, and I'm all for just a girl who is living in purpose, the things that I love, I love to bring it to people and from the essentials to philanthropy, to business, to branding. And it's just all about just being the best to you. Love it. So there's a quote, um, it was from an article. I, one of the articles I read about you and it said, um, civil is in demand because she's the kind of person who can travel between populations, helping them <laughs> communicate with each other. And when I'm, well, I kind of want to ask you what you hear when you when you read that. But when I read it, I, I kind of read it as somebody who knew how to be around a Hillary Clinton, but then also knew how to be around a Jeezy or a Net War and et cetera. And and was as authentic to your to one of your earlier points, like you knew how to be in those rooms and be just as authentic and just as you and still bring the value of Karen Civil. So what do you hear? when when I read you that quote? Um, that's something that I always tell people, like I grew up on TRL Carson Daly and I used to watch how Carson moved. When I remember um, Cash Money came up there, he had the bandana, the braids, he looked like he could fit in, right? Yeah. Then then Sting came up there, he looked like he was in a boy band. He always knew how to talk to his guests and make them feel comfortable. Even when they didn't feel like, if you remember how when ODB was up there, when Ghetto Superstar dropped <laughs> and ODB was, he was like, yeah, we're doing charity. He's like, what you doing? Nothing. He was like, okay. He knew <laughs> how to maneuver anybody he did an interview with. And it was like never a bad interview. And I just always looked at that and I said, you know what? I love this about him. And that's who I, that's who somebody that I, I, created my blueprint of how I have conversations and things because I hate the notion of, you know, oh, when you walk into a room or you only can talk to this crowd or you don't belong here, you don't fit. Who says? Who says? Yeah. I can be where, I can be whatever, I can do if it makes sense to me. I belong in those rooms and, and it's only right. I love to create synergies where you bring people together. Like um, I remember Hillary Clinton did a contest where if you registered to vote, you got to meet Pusha T. She got so much backlash from it. But guess how many people, guess how many people over 300,000 um, young millennials registered, Generation Z millennials registered to vote off of that tweet. So yeah. when people, CNN and Fox and everybody's like, oh, why is she doing this? I know what I'm doing at the end of the day and, and understanding the goal of being able to bring someone like Jeezy and Betty White together. like those type of moments feel like those moments feel good and it's organic because those people love artists and artists mm -hmm. love them. So why not create the synergy synergy and bring them together? So that's what I honestly love doing. So if somebody gives me an idea and like, Hey, we want to do this. I'll just be like, Hey, why don't we incorporate X, Y, Z and you do this and blah, blah, blah. And they get excited by that. Sometimes they're a little bit weary. Yeah, it may you know may throw them for a loop, but they trust in me, and it and it has worked. Some of the best relationships have come from me just you know bringing people together, and that's really what it's about. And it's like, why not? Why does hip hop to me is 
the number one thing. Everybody loves hip hop. Everyone wants to be hip hop are rock stars. That's what a rock star is. You know, a hip hop artist. Everybody wants to be around them, wants to be immersed in it. From fashion to sports to what lifestyle to everything, it's it's the musician, it's the hip hop artist, it's rock star. So why can't they be at these shows or with these CEOs and these things? They're the ones moving the culture. So they should be there. So it's like, why not? I mean, if I, you know, my biggest thing was I remember Nipsey, Nipsey sipped Tennessee. And I was like, you know what? We're going to meet Maurice. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and Maurice, if you like even Google the photo, he's throwing up the neighborhood. Like he <laughs> even, we having a good old time in Beverly Hills. And another time he came and he put on the 400 hat and he was hanging out. So it's just like those things where you take away all those ideologies of, or just notions of, oh, I, we may not have something in common because of our skin color or because of, you know, our class or um, because we may be from different areas. Let's create conversation, business. We're out here. Why not? Black Tech Green Money is a production of Blavity Afrotech and is produced by Morgan DeBon and Will Lucas. With additional production support by Love Beach, Stephanie Ogbogu, and Raven Irabor. Special thank you to Micah Davis, Sankara Savanyan, you know, like the wine, and yes, that's his real name, and Karika Green. Learn more about Karen Civil and other tech disruptors and innovators at afrotech.com. Go get your money. Peace and love.